Hey YouTube, welcome to Aquavita Woodworks. I am Justin, and today we're gonna to be using the Shapoco CNC to build the tractor. Let's do it. Earlier this week, I was in the shop waiting for my CNC to finish carving a flag, and I decided to sit down and watch some YouTube videos. I happened to stumble across a woodworking channel called A Cut Above Woodworking, and he was making a really interesting toy tractor using a scroll saw and layering a bunch of pieces together. As soon as I saw it, I realized that I wanted to design my own and cut it out on the CNC. So I grabbed my tinkering hat and started drawing out what my plan could be. After a couple of minutes of thinking really hard on how I wanted to design this, I came up with this super realistic drawing of a tractor. As you can see, it has small wheels in the front, large wheels in the back, some fenders over the rear wheels, a steering column into the engine compartment, a fan, a smokestack, and then some random components in the front to make it look like I knew what I was doing. Once satisfied with the idea, I went over to the computer and designed this in SketchUp. Now, if you're not familiar with SketchUp, it's just a CAD program that lets you draw shapes and extrude them into the third dimension. If you have a CNC or just do woodworking in general, I highly recommend this program because it allows you to mock up ideas before you actually build them in real life. When it comes to this tractor design, you can see the darker wood here is three quarter inch stock material and the lighter wood is quarter inch material. I plan on using some quarter inch dowels to hold these pieces together and also use for axles on the wheels. To make more sense of this, here's an exploded view of the tractor. As you can see, this is just a bunch of components that will be carved out flat and then pushed together and glued to make a 3D model. Once I had all my components separated, I laid them out flat and on the same plane and organized them into the same stock thickness. Once I do that, I can export this as a DXF file, which I can then pull into Carbide Create and assign toolpaths. Once my files are pulled into Carbide Create, assigning the toolpaths is pretty straightforward. The majority of these carves will use an eighth inch downcut bit to pocket out the holes and the areas in the engine compartment, and then as well as contour the outside of these components. I did use a quarter inch downcut bit to hog out a bulk of the material from the wheels as well as these fenders. And I did need to work on these fenders a bit. As you can see, I am tracing the outside here so I can connect that vector and hog out that inner part of the fender. I also ended up using a 16th inch downcut bit to carve out the very small parts that couldn't fit the eighth inch bit. I later ended up adding my name to this, which required a 60 degree V bit to carve out the letters. To make more sense of these toolpaths, I think it's easier if I just show you the final simulations. The two simulations on the bottom show the three quarter inch stock material, which in my case will be oak, and the top shows the quarter inch stock, which will be maple. The wheels will be held in place with double sided tape. The other two carves will use tabs, and that's because I didn't want adhesive getting in the small components in the engine. It would just make sanding a pain. A more detailed guide to these toolpaths, as well as the SVG files, will be linked in the video description below. Once my G-code is saved, I can transfer it with a USB to my Fusion 5 tablet on my Shapoco and start carving. Up first, we have the main body of the tractor as well as the two fenders. This uses just the quarter inch down cut bit for the main pockets on the fenders and an eighth inch down cut bit for everything else. Using pretty conservative speeds, this took about an hour. Next, we have the quarter inch maple for the outside components and the seat and steering wheel. This is mainly an eighth inch down cut bit for everything, including the pockets and contour. And it does use a 16th inch down cut bit for those small lines under the engine. This carve took about 25 minutes. And finally, we have the tires, which uses a quarter inch down cut bit to bulk out the center of the tires, as well as pocket down the small tires. So their final thickness is only half an inch. Everything else is done with an eighth inch down cut bit. Once everything is done, I sprayed the area where my logo is with some lacquer, let it dry, painted it, and then started sanding everything. I won't bore you too much with sanding, but I do think it's easier to sand before you cut the tabs off and then again once they're off. After cutting off the tabs with a multi-tool, I headed over to the spindle sander to remove them completely. I then marked and drilled a quarter inch hole in what I guess would be the dashboard of the tractor where the steering wheel will be inserted. Finally, I can start gluing this project together. Uh, be careful applying too much glue here. You don't want that much squeeze out in these small engine compartments because it's gonna be really hard to sand later on. 
and the use of quarter inch dowels makes lining everything up really easy. Just cut them longer than you need and then flush trim them after everything is dry. Once you have your fenders and three main body parts together, just use a whole bunch of clamps to hold everything nice and tight. While I was waiting for that to dry, I started working on the tire treads for the rear tires. A cut above woodworking has a better explanation on how to do this, but basically you use a jig on your table saw and a dado stack to cut some tire treads at an angle. And yes, I know there's no throat plate in my table saw. It doesn't fit with my dado stack. Don't do what I do. Once you're done, you're left with these pretty cool looking tractor tires. The next day we can go remove the clamps and start sanding. And I did want to mention that I clamped down the seat and steering wheel. Now it's time for everyone's favorite part, start sanding. This was a real pain to sand. I used my orbital sander, but mostly did everything by hand up to 220 grit. You get the gist, it wasn't fun. But the good news is once we're done with that, it's time to apply finish and then we're almost done. When it comes to finish for this project, I ended up using cutting board mineral oil and I didn't have a large enough container to soak this in. So I had to just kind of get creative and pour it all over it. If you do have a large container, definitely soak it in there. I ended up doing this by hand with some gloves on, and I also soaked the wheels off camera. After that, I simply press fit the tires and added some washers in between the axles. I didn't want to glue these in because the dowels were tight enough fit where I didn't think it was necessary. Plus, if I want to take it apart in the future, I can. Once the wheels are on, we have a tractor. Look at this thing. Pretty sweet. Pretty amazed that I was able to do this on the CNC. I definitely want to do more projects like this in the future. Uh, if you think I should, hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching, guys.